When you're in school, what are the three things you look forward to most? Winter break, summer break, and spring break. And back in the day, no one did spring break like MTV. If you were around for spring break in the 90s like I was, you were either traveling to party on the beaches of Panama City and Cancun, or turning the tube to MTV to see everything you were missing out on. Cause even if you couldn't make it in person, you could still enjoy all the mayhem from the comfort of your very own couch. MTV Spring Break was the wild week of spring holiday hijinks we look forward to all year. An event full of drunk dudes or busty bikini babes partying amongst the coolest DJs, D-list celebrities, and A-list pop stars of the time with epic performances on six stages and beautiful beach backgrounds. And best of all was the crazy games where wild half-dressed college kids would do outrageous things for cash, prizes, and 15 minutes of fame. Most of the time, you couldn't believe the stuff you were seeing was actually on cable TV, and most of what they actually filmed, they couldn't legally air. You'd watch in excitement, hoping the producers would accidentally slip up and let a nip slip out. MTV Spring Break will most likely never be again what it was a quarter century ago. That's why in this video, we're going to take a look back at a wilder time when MTV Spring Break ruled. MTV started its annual spring break tradition all the way back in 1986 in Daytona Beach, Florida, and later expanded to other locations in the state, as well as Cancun, Jamaica, South Padre Island, New Orleans, Hawaii, the Bahamas. It truly was something to behold. And back then, when MTV's target audience was still 18 to 35 year olds, rather than tweens and 10 year olds like it is now, Spring Break was the perfect opportunity for the network to capitalize on the viewer's desire to get a piece of the youth culture event, even if just vicariously through their television screens. And one of the fan favorites during that week of debauchery was the infamous Beauty in the Beach contest. Essentially, a bunch of hot bodies grooving on stage while a DJ spins hip-hop and dance tunes and hosts like Ed Lover call for each individual contestant to step out front and center and show the audience what they got. As usual, a crowd of onlookers would peer up from below, cheering on their favorite contestants who had three rounds to grind, gyrate, and try their best to win prizes and the title Beauty of the Beach. Another favorite was MTV's beachfront version of the dating game, Blind Date, where three contestants, hidden from their potential suitor, would compete by responding to sultry questions and show off their other talents in an attempt to be the chosen one who would end up winning a spring break date with the lucky bachelor or bachelorette. If I were an instrument, I'd probably be a drum, because I like to hear the rhythm all night long. <laughs> the game was a classic, and always featured hilarious hosts who would keep up the energy by commenting on the contestants' ridiculous responses. Now, I was sure she'd say cello. By the way, if you were wondering what Jon Stewart was doing long before shaming white people merely for their existence, it was this. Florida! America's p And who could forget everyone's buddy? Pauly Shore. That dude was an MTV icon in the early 90s, and at no time did he shine brighter than during spring break when he hosted his own shows like Totally Polly and Chillin' with the Wheeze. The Wheeze Top quality spring break programming that lasted from 1990 to 95 and featured the Weasel roaming around Daytona Beach with cameras following, messing with people and celebrities, hanging out in bars and on beaches with fans, comedians, and musicians as well as hosting video countdowns, live shows, and performances. He would also incorporate his own comedy skits into the shows. Everyone loved the weasel back then, and this spring break regular was a can't miss. And speaking of spring break regulars, you can't talk about MTV spring break without mentioning the master of mayhem, Jerry Springer. The Jerry Springer show hit its peak popularity in the late 90s, so who better to bring his crazy style of crude entertainment to the beaches of MTV Spring Break than the hilarious host himself? Similar to Pauly Shore, Jerry Springer had a large portion of the programming devoted just to him. The aptly named Springer Break was some of the best entertainment MTV had to offer through the week. One aspect of Jerry's Springer Break was when he'd essentially bring the drama of his show to the beachfront stage in a segment called Roommate Confessions with college-age partiers confronting each other over hookups, cheating, and the same style of daily drama you knew and loved from the Jerry Springer show. Although the most notorious roommate confession was when a couple and their friend pranked Jerry in MTV, pretending the girl cheated with the best friend and the husband-to-be telling her she was a slut and attacking the friend on stage. 
Most of Jerry's show was said to be fake with paid guests acting out drama for ratings. But apparently even Jerry wasn't in on this stunt and these kids had everyone fooled. Fake or not, it was a good prank and pretty funny. Springer Break was awesome. And uh, you haven't done anything here that the good fathers of Notre Dame would be upset about. Especially because you could always count on Jerry to chime in at the right moment with his own brand of witty insult humor. A good Catholic girl would never do anything wrong. <laughs> I, I understand that, but I'm talking about you. But even when Jerry wasn't hosting an essentially sun-soaked version of his own show, he was hosting game shows like Spring Broke where he would offer cash to desperate spring breakers willing to debase themselves on national television for a mere 20 bucks. Some of the most memorable moments from that contest include a guy jumping rope in the buff on stage and a chick who covered herself in honey and rolled around in a pile of colorful feathers. That bit alone had teenagers dreaming of the day they'd be old enough to waste their parents' money on a week of partying in paradise. Another Springer Break segment every teenager loved was the King and Queen of Spring Break contest where couples would compete in crazy games, often requiring them to remove their clothing in some way to determine who would be crowned the king and queen of the beach. You see those beautiful bathing suits? In the next round, they're coming off. And by couples, I mean two random strangers who happen to meet and hook up within hours of the contest starting. Yeah, we met on the beach at spring break. Another awesome show Jerry hosted was Spring Break Fantasies where he would invite spring breakers on stage to describe their spring break fantasy, then let it play out in some wild way. One of the most infamous moments from that show was when a guy had a whipped cream bikini fantasy, a spring break take on the infamous scene from the 90s movie Varsity Blues. The result was a group of college co-eds running around stage with whipped cream melting off their literally hot bodies. That whipped cream was gone immediately, so there was a lot of flashing going on. It was great. Another thing youngsters of the 90s always looked forward to during that week was the music performances. Back then, MTV was actually about music on TV. So if you were a music fan, you couldn't wait to see which of your favorite artists would be jamming Oceanside while the hottest babes MTV could find strutted around elaborate stages in scantily clad swimwear. Even if you were just watching it from your couch, it almost felt like you were right there enjoying it live with everyone else as they grind and chug beer in three feet of crystal clear water. And speaking of grinding and live performances, another awesome bit of sun-soaked programming was the spring break version of The Grind. Basically, just an outdoor thrust fest with a DJ or a live performer, a stage, pools, platforms, and cameras everywhere, filming oddly dressed people whiling out to chart toppers of the day or eight minute mixes of random 90s dance tracks. Like with most spring break shows, they'd always manage to get a celebrity host, Dave Chappelle, <laughs> or use one of their VJs for a quick talking segment where they would mention the notorious DJ Scribble or whoever the next live guest would be. DJ Scribble. Outside of when they would actually have live performers, why viewers were entertained by a 30 minute program of people dancing terribly and having massive amounts of fun while you were just sitting at home missing out on all the action, I couldn't tell you. Especially since most of the dancing was absolutely atrocious, but I guess that was part of the appeal. It would always be funny to see the camera view switch to someone completely rhythmically deficient or trying to show off for the viewers, only to have the camera operator or editor immediately try to focus on someone else. It was almost like you could imagine them thinking, uh oh, we gotta get away from this loser before our viewers tune out. Another spring break classic was Say What Karaoke, a game show where contestants would compete on stage by singing popular songs of the time karaoke style. The best part was that most of the contestants were complete garbage and many were clearly wannabe rappers or singers seeking some sort of fame or validation by appearing on the show. It was typically hosted by an MTV personality like Carson Daly and after each contestant's turn, a panel of celebrity judges would rate them to determine the winner. I give them a double zero, that's a dumb song. The show was hilarious and always led to some contestants getting flustered, making complete fools of themselves. Whether they did well or not, the original song was always playing behind them, so at the very least, you get to listen to some dope tunes. MTV Spring Break hit its apex at around the turn of the century. You could notice a gradual decline in the production value from that point, with much fewer programs being offered throughout the week. 
Also, the action went from taking place on an epic stage, beachside with a beautiful ocean backdrop, and some of the most amazing vacation destinations, to a tiny stage with traffic flying by in the background. It really killed the sunny spring break vibes you'd grown to know and love over the years. Suddenly, similar to their scheduling style today, they would just be playing the same three shows over and over for nine days straight, making the whole thing feel completely stale and unappealing. It was like they just went to some place with warm weather, not even necessarily a beach, set up the smallest, cheapest stage they could get away with, and shot some lame footage for a single day. Eventually, they moved the annual event altogether in 2005 to MTV's sister station, MTVU, the college-targeted version of the network. That just shows you how much the ratings must have plummeted over those last few years, and MTVU is where it was held on life support until completely dying in 2014. They did try to revive the event a half a decade later in 2019, claiming MTV's spring break is back. But of course, they weren't able to recapture the same magic it once had, especially in the era of activism and Me Too. But given the change in the culture over the past couple of decades, the president of MTV, Chris McCarthy, decided to capitalize on the new attitude of Zoomers by proclaiming, in addition to the Cancun events, we'll also feature an alternative spring break experience focusing on charity and activism. Spring break activism. Sounds amazing. That's what we want to do with our one week off from the stress and struggles of endless exams and research papers, complain about a lack of social justice awareness and equity. Ain't no activism in these clips, just active hedonism fueled by hormones, alcohol, and a desperate desire for cash and attention. Just like the Studio 54 days are over for the boomers, so are the MTV Spring Break days for Gen Xers and the older millennial crowd. But it was great while it lasted, and at least the footage still exists to give us a window into a time where tips were frosted, flannel was flaunted, denim was considered beachwear, Polly Shore was a god, and Jerry Springer the leader of an attention-seeking cult of shameless whores and hooligans. Where for a few days out of our otherwise boring, busy lives, we could kick back and enjoy a week of drunken debauchery during the annual event known as MTV's Spring Break. Were you around for spring break back then? Were you ever there in person? Let me know in the comments and thanks for clicking like or subscribing for more Culture Guys content. Feel free to check out the rest of the channel. I'll see you there and until then, live well and take it easy. Later.